I gotta say is to all the bro guys, just man up, play the game, win. Stop always thinking about money. Just play to get better. Try to grow the community. That way, in the end, you will get money. Great moments are born from great opportunity. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Directional Influence, episode 12, brought to you by VVV Gaming. I'm Dakota. With me uh, is Will. As always, how you doing, man? I'm pretty good. Chilling in this really cold room right now, because it's the only place with privacy in my house. But you know what? I'm doing great. Yep, it's cold. Um, It's December. It's sort of the off-season. Nothing's really happening, which means we have less and less to talk about each day. However... Um, coincidentally, which is going to be one of, the, by the way, what I'm about to say is going to be one of the main topics of our show this week is that it's the anniversary of Smash Bros. Uh, not too long ago, and some comments from an interview from Masahiro Sakurai, who is the pretty much the big honcho behind Smash Bros., has you know talked about it, and we're going to discuss that today, as well as having a special guest on the show. Uh, a one west of New York who does charity events and tournaments. We're going to talk to him about that. Uh, it's a long way did we've been trying to get him on the show for quite some time. So with that, Directional Influence Episode 12 coming at you right now. So guys, um, Smash Bros. came out quite some time ago on the N64, Melee, not too long after, and it's been quite a while since then with Brawl in between and... You know, the guy behind it, Masahiro Sakurai, who, you know, we all know, probably don't love though, I, I don't, has talked about Melee and Smash in itself in the future, if it has one. And we're going to discuss that today because, personally, I think that he, it like, I think he lives in the year 2006, this guy. I really do. You know, I have a problem with the, with casual gaming getting in the way of everything else. And I'm going to say this just first off to start this off, but just because a game has depth doesn't mean that it makes it any less accessible, right? Because it's up to the player to access that depth and, you know, play the game a different way. It doesn't mean that, you know, having depth makes it the most hardcore, badass game so that literally makes you kill yourself if you touch the controller. You know, with Melee, I felt it was really pick up and play. Even though I didn't play it competitively, when I played with friends, I didn't have a problem playing the game. It wasn't difficult. It, I like I didn't have a, t- a hard time trying to figure out how to use the game. Whereas he thinks that it was too too difficult. It wasn't accessible enough, which I don't personally don't believe in. And then he made Brawl, which no offense to anyone who likes Brawl, and I personally love Brawl, but like it's slow and clunky. And not as awesome, and I don't like that. He, I know I'm gonna get like I don't know something for that, but like seriously, let's be honest here. He literally took away death because he thought the game was too difficult. Like, what is that? Yeah, he actually talks about, and it's uh, it's been nine years since since the anniversary. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. The one thing that he he references is the extremely grueling development cycle that melee. Like, I think he just. He hated how hard it was to make a good game. 
yeah. you know, really competitive, very balanced Smash Brothers. Yeah. And um, he emphasizes, you know, that it took a really long time to make the game, and he, he goes over and over on that. But, um, I, I mean, it's, it's, it is because of Sakurai that we have Super Smash Brothers Melee, so we can thank him for That's that. That's true. I mean, but it's like, you know, I mean, he says it. In, in you know the interview that if he makes another Smash Bros. game, that's a, a very big if, because if you guys don't remember when, before Ball was, you know, developed, Nintendo, like, begged him to make another one. Uh, I mean, he barely made that, so I really doubt that if another one is made, he's behind it. But if he is, he says that it's going to be more like Brawl. Yeah, um, there's actually a few key important quotes that we have here that Sakurai, um, that we can reference. Yeah, we got a few and, here. Um, he, he claims that he created the Smash Brothers series to be his response to how hardcore exclusive the fighting game genre had become over the years. So, people, like, have gone on another route altogether, and this these communities have developed, like, competitive communities for fighting games, and basically, he kind of shuns that. Almost. Yeah. I really like the fact that we, we've taken the game and our own interpretation and gone another direction with it. So as a response to that, he's almost trying to take out, you know... Everything that the could make it... Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, everyone makes that you know argument. Well, it's his fault that it's not as competitive because he made it intentionally. Which I can understand. You know, if he... I mean, when the first one was made... You know, the true essence of why the game was made was to put Nintendo characters in there and make them beat the crap out of each other. It wasn't to really make a hardcore fighting game like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, which I understand. But fighting games, you know, fighting games in and of themselves, when you get right down to it, will always be on that competitive line because of how they're made. Same thing with most shooters, with, you know, sports games, all that. If you make a game that is inherently always competitive, it's very hard to make it not competitive unless you're intentionally going out of your way to make it crappier. I mean, he talked about it at one point where he says that you shouldn't, you know, just, like, focus on everything that involves gameplay and balance details, which I can understand, too. But those things are very important regardless of what genre you're, you're aiming at. Because I'm going to be honest, I talk to people and I play with people who don't play Brawl competitively, and there is not one person that thinks tripping is fun. Like, not one. And nobody thinks that making Ganondorf the worst piece of dog crap ever makes the game more fun. And I don't think he understands that, that once again, trying to make the game more accessible to everybody doesn't mean they get the crap on everything else that made the game pretty much good. Yeah, and a lot of, you know, competitive melee players, and I know they take a lot of, they take a lot of the stuff that he says to heart, and not in, not in a good way. Um... Sakurai says that melee fans who played deep into the game without any problems might have had trouble understanding this. The fact that that he mm. wants to make the game accessible, and and then he claims that, but melee was just too difficult. And in my opinion, I just think that maybe maybe Sakurai was really bad at melee. Like maybe that that was he probably was he was probably bad at his game. He was probably so tired from making it that he was just bad at it. And you know. We shouldn't cater to the scrubs. And I'm a scrub. I shouldn't be, you know, I'm I'm saying this. Don't make a game for people like me because we make the game bad. Trust me. I'm a doctor. And, and it should be of, of note that Sakurai means Ganondorf in Brawl. That's also true because apparently it doesn't matter what character you use, you still can win. Just throwing that out there, according to him. <laughs> One of his famous quotes. But, I mean... You know, at one point he says, if we want new people from this generation of gamers to come in, then we need it accessible, simple, and playable by anyone. You can't let yourself get preoccupied with nothing but gameplay and balance details, which I referenced earlier. And it's it's annoying. Like, the, what new generation of gamers? I, I understand that every, you know, few years we get all these new players, but trust me, they're going to get into Melee. I mean, Melee was huge. Melee was huge, and it wasn't... If if the game was too difficult, why was it so popular with all audiences, really? Everyone played that game. Everybody played that game. You didn't have to be a competitive gamer to play Melee. You didn't have to be a hardcore gamer to play Melee. I knew people who play Melee just for fun, just to play with items, just to play with, you know, the stupid-ass stages in that game. 
it, you know, the difficulty level really, I've played more difficult games on like the PSP than Melee. And in terms of like overallness, I understand competitive like tech skills is, you know, up there. But overall, Melee is not like the hardest game you'll find on the GameCube. Not at all. So I don't know. It's stupid. I, honestly, if they made another Smash Bros., I would like Retro Studios to make it. Like, really, Retro Studios, for some reason, can take whatever series they want and just make it awesome. Doesn't matter what series it is, whether it's Metroid or Donkey Kong Country, it's jizzworthy. And they should just, Nintendo just give it to them, because I think Retro Studios makes really good games. Give it to them, give them a few years, and they will make a game at least, maybe not more like Melee, but definitely not like Brawl, something good, you know? I I think that... Sakurai is just too into the whole concept of Nintendo, which, at, in one respect, they are, they stick to their original titles, but, but now, na- nowadays they've been they've been trying to do so much crazy innovation. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen Kirby Epic Yarn. I haven't played that game yet, but it's like such a different take on the series. It just feels like with every each new game that comes out, it seems that he just wants to change it as much as possible and possibly also make it appeal to little kids like I'm sorry but that's what it seems like and he just kind of he kind of is disregarding his hardcore audience a bit and it's been like that ever since you know in my opinion ever since the Wii came out and yeah after the release of like like Metroid Prime 3 Corruption and Super Mario Galaxy and Galaxy 2 like those you know those, Those are the are good days that we would play, like the old games yeah. we play. Everything else seems like it's more geared toward either really old people or like little children. So except, I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, that. except like Donkey Kong Country. I'm telling you, that's like the one exception. Yes. You guys have not played play that. that. If you guys have not played the KCR Donkey Kong Country Returns by Retro Studios. It is amazing. I think it's the best one in the series. I know people have opinions about, it, but I, it is really good. That's a difficult fucking game at some points. He I also thinks, want to play what? with someone. That's true. That. That's a nice ass co op. Co op <laughs> is really fun. I, like it's a good game overall. It's like you, if you own a Wii and you aren't an old person who just wants to play Wii napping, get this game because this, if he thinks if he thinks melee is difficult, this the game will literally make him cry at some points. It really because it, it's not like a frustrating and difficult. It's like wow, this game wants to like nip me in the ass about not being a bad you know player. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I perfectly you know I completely agree with you. That we've been losing that sort of hardcore thing, and Smash Bros. got sort of sucked into it because we let the same people make these decisions. It's like politicians in government. We let these old people make decisions on things they have no idea what they're talking about, and then they talk about it and they complain and and then they apologize for like stupid crap in Congress, which is stupid. By the way, shout out to like The Daily Show and give me on that news. They're really funny. Um, to be honest, Dakota, I think that. The only real way we can take care of this situation and these these problems that we're having with the not having hardcore games in Nintendo is we all need to get degrees in game design. <laughs> we need to go join Nintendo or whatever, whatever company we want, start our own company, and make the better fighting game or be a part of Smash Brothers the way that we want it to be. That's what I think. I would love to... You know, if it was really that easy, if I could just, like, pick up my degree, like, yo, let's go do it. You know, Pokemon Adventure, you know, and it's like, well, I'm going out to make a video game. Okay, so I'm come back sometime and take your money from my pocket. You know, that'd be great. And I would love to. Um, but it's it's one of those things where it's honestly not that easy. I mean, I don't know how hard it is to join a team that makes a game for an established franchise, let alone Smash Bros., which is one of the most popular Nintendo franchises out there. Uh, even though it only has three games. So, I don't know. I do agree, though. You know, the much we can change as possible. But without, outside of that, though, there's really not much we can do. Because hardcore gamers, as, part, as far as Sakurai is concerned, either don't exist, are making games too difficult, or, you know, play every match on Final Destination. And it doesn't matter what they think. You know, unfortunately. And which is why I think I personally... Which I personally think he shouldn't make them anymore. You know? I think he should just retire or do something else. Let him make Kirby games. Which, by the way, Epic Yarn was a disappointment. I'm sorry, but it was six hours long, and you, like, can't die. You cannot die in this game. Like, it's... It, it sounds like that, uh, the new Prince of Persia, not not the most recent one based on the movie, but the one right before that, that was really pretty. Yeah. It 
was on the 360 and, and uh, PS3. It was extremely gorgeous. Like, the graphics were amazing. Mm-hmm. But you just, like, it took out that part of the series where, you know, you couldn't die. So it was very easy. And there were barely any battles. It was mostly puzzle-based. So Yeah, but... You know, leave with this. Sakurai thinks that's where the core of the Smash Bros. concept lies. As in, you know, making the game accessible to everybody. Not doggedly keeping the game the way it was before. So, I think eventually we're going to get to a point where we're going to have Smash Bros. games that every game is just a quick time event. We can see who can throw out an attack first. Like Rock, Paper, Scissors. Because that is the most accessible way for Smash Bros. to be a casual game. And at that point, hopefully we'll all be dead. Long gone and dead. And as, as somebody said in one of their comments on one of these articles, you know, maybe we'll just have an option where we can flip a coin or roll a die and, like, just see what happens. Whoever gets the highest number wins, because if you make it any more luck-based, especially, you know, with tripping and all the random occurrences in Brawl, it's pretty much what's going to come down to. Yep. Retro Studios or Super Smash Bros. 4, calling it. All right, everybody, we have a special guest with you, like we said this evening. We have um, the legendary Melee player. I'm not sure if you guys know him. He's a part of Deadly Alliance, and his name is Wes. How are you, how are you doing, Wes? Tell, you about, tell us about yourself. Uh, well, obviously, people know me as Wes, of course. Um, I'm just here just trying to help out the community with an uh, organization that me and fellow DA members formed. Uh, called SOS Gamers, and pretty much what we do is we host um, electronic entertainment events for charitable purposes and do other charitable services, such as, you know, uh, help out the elderly, um, go to hospitals, and help out through video gaming. Like, for instance, this past Saturday, we went to a hospital and helped them host a holiday party, and, um, you know, brought the Nintendo Wii over and helped to play Smash Brothers. And um, Mario and Sonic at the Olympics and other Wii games, things that, of that nature. So that's, that's pretty actually much really, really cool. Um, so, so what kind of charities do you guys help, and um, how many, how many actually, which people are a part of um, SOS Gamers? Like, how did how did you recruit people <coughs> for for that uh, that um that organization? Pretty much the uh, the core people in SOS Gamers is about uh, I guess five people for right now. And it's uh, Kubina, myself, um, Savasia, um, Compton, people know him as Comp, uh, Raphael, which is Raph, uh, Ganon, Numbers, whatever his name is on Smash Board. And uh, that's pretty much it as far as the core members of SOS Gamers. And we have other members too, but those aren't the cores yet, and we didn't, they're not ready to be announced as well. Yes, rather. I know you guys had... Um Actually, you had an event at, at Poly one time, at Polytechnic University in Brooklyn. I actually didn't get a chance to make it, but I know that there was something involved with... It was a food drive, was that correct? A food drive? Uh, yes, we did have something. Uh, a food drive. But, um, who was it for? It was City Harvest. And pretty much what we did is we had a smash tournament. And um, $5 went to, you know, as far as entry fee and the other... Five a replace of five. We um charge just charge, tell people to f- bring in five food items, or instead of bringing you know five dollars. If they wanted to bring five dollars, then we'll just use that as you know a monetary donation towards the cause. Uh, we'll probably just purchase food after that, regardless. So pretty much half of the entry fee would just go to the cause, which was you know City Harvest. Because City Harvest is an organization that helps feed people in need, such as uh, I guess homeless people and people who can't go outside to. Purchase food. So, there you have it, guys. Wes is pretty much the leader in the Smash community of, of you know, toward charity events and just being a real, like, in top, in, on top of improving our Smash community, just giving us a really good image that we can work with, that we can, and we can help spread out to, to the rest of the community, and it gives us a really good look in the public eye. Mm-hmm. So, shout out to Wes for that. It's good stuff. Yeah. I'm not only trying to do this for, uh, you know, to represent the Smash, but even though it's, you know, the root of my whole, I guess, you want to call it my fame or whatever, history, I'm still trying to, you know, it's pretty much just for all gamers out there in general, whether you play Smash or at home, just to help out in any 
you know, given time or any way you can. All right. So we talked about about the kind of the kind of stuff that that Wes does for the community and you know the charity events and everything that he holds. Which, by the way, most of them they take place in uh, New York City, right? So uh, for the most part, yes. Okay. So everybody around, you know, Long Island, New York, tri-state area, everybody get down to these events. Like, Wes is, is going all out, you know, putting in a lot of work advertising these events, and he's, you know, he's trying to help out everybody. So it's not even just Smash. It's like a whole bunch of different games, like he said. And the venues are, you know, very accessible, and everything's for a good cause. So mm-hmm. Not only me. I'm not the only person doing it, so if anyone mm-hmm. out there that listens to this, it's not me only, obviously. It's, you know, everyone as a whole in SOS Gamers, along with people who help volunteer um, to help us with these events. So I don't take full credit at all. Because without them or myself, this wouldn't be possible. So just cool. so that, that, you know. So I just want to ask, how you, how did you get SOS Gamers together and, like, why? Uh, pretty much we um, got it together. It was almost a year from now. Uh, because a while, a long time ago, we... we um, the Delhi Alliance, rather, we teamed up with a few people to help them with a food drive. And after a while, it dawned on us that, you know, just entering tournaments and competing in tournaments wasn't enough for us. We wanted to, you know, do something bigger with the gaming because you can't, you can't win. You know, you just can't only win tournaments and expect to make a difference in a community. It gets old because after a while, you know, you you know, you aren't going, always going to be on top. So, you know, we decided to form something legitimate because we found it hard for us to actually, you know, go to other organizations to try to ask them for help or, you know, to at least collaborate with them under, number one, a name called Delhi Alliance because that raised eyebrows. <laughs> they were like, oh, you know, Delhi Alliance, you know, why would we want to collaborate with an organization called Delhi Alliance? So then we was like, that was already one one strike. And then another thing, we wasn't a legitimate, like, on-paper organization. So then we had to also have a different name along with being a legitimate organization. So then that's when we were like, all right, let's form a, uh, you know, not proper organization that actually helps out, you know, all types of causes. And that's pretty much it, through video gaming and other means of, you know, help. That's That pretty much covers everything for the... The SOS Gamers com concept. So I guess we'll we'll talk a little bit more about you, Wes. So right. what's oh. what's your history here in uh, in the in the gaming community? So where where did you where was your start? Let's just put it that way. Wow, this guy's going back. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it started through uh, Smash 64, and uh, me and my one of my best friends to this day is um Jason. Uh, people know him as Hell Fox. Uh, we had a rivalry going on, and uh, I played him, and you know he seemed real good. And I guess I had a, it was just me versus his family, pretty much. And <laughs> they thought it was good. I went through everyone in his family, but I just he was the only person that gave me problems, or it was, me and was on the same level. And then after a while, we just kept playing um, 64 for a while. Then we moved on to melee. Then after melee, we just started training every, like almost every day, and Every Friday, we would go to this one of our friends' house. His name was Brian. No one knows about because he's never been to Tony Road. This guy named Brian used to go to his house on Friday night and play there all the way until Saturday almost night, just playing, like, um, Smash Brothers Melee. And after that, we started to, uh, we went to our first tournament in New York City. It was held in a basement. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much how, the first, first legitimate tournament in New York City that was held by, you know, a fan-made tournament that was held. And uh, me and my, me, Jason and his cousins, after all that, that rivalry happened, we actually formed the alliance. We wasn't called anything. We was just, you know, friends just going to events. So we went to this event, and uh, we were scared because, you know, the whole stereotype, oh, you know, Japanese is going to swipe the floor with us or something like that, a Chinese guy. So he's like, Dad, yo, you're going to get scraped by Chinese people, man, Japanese people. So then next thing you know, I start playing, and all of me, my friend Jason, you know, a.k.a. Hell Fox, we just scrape everyone there. And I'm like, wow, you serious? I was thinking we were going to get scraped by, you know, the Japanese players. And the next thing you know, we became, you know, the top players in New York City. And then uh, we just started winning tournaments back to back. The next thing you know, um, 
we start playing, we go in the other coast, I mean, other parts of the East Coast and taking over there. And after that, I meet Asian, and then he, he becomes a threat to me, and me and him kind of, like, go back and forth when it comes to events. And then me and him became, like, the two best people on the East Coast at the time. And from there, we met Ken and Isaiah, and then so forth and so on. That must have been back in, I want to say, like, back when the game first came out, before it was even truly competitive, like, what, like 2004, 2005, maybe? Nah, was, was it, like, a few years after Melee came out, or was, it, or was it when it first came out? It was, like, a year after it came out, like, 2002, 2003. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. Because I know that, um, I know Melee didn't go MLG until, like, what was it, 2006? Was that the first year? It was like 2000, late 2005, 2006. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Cause, uh, because you know, I know that you eventually, with uh, your skills and everybody around, you know, you and the best players from East Coast, New York City, you know, MDVA, you guys eventually, when MLG came out, you started traveling. Yeah, we started traveling a lot for MLG. Even before MLG, we started traveling before that, like, because there was big tournaments. Like, I like the melee, you know, I give melee, you know, the melee community a lot of props that they still staying alive, but they missed out on, a, like, the golden age of melee. Like, that's when everything used to happen, like, the golden age of, like, seriously, like, rivalry. Crews actually, meet, you know, meant something. Like, crews were actually, like, there was tons of crews just coming out the woodworks, trying to buy the lots, uh, Asians crew, every, there was a ton of crews. Nowadays, crews come and go. And people just form crews for like like a day or two, and that's it. And like now, it's like back in the days, like everybody was there was some like legitimate rivalries. Like people used to scream at each other in tournaments, and it just gave the community more power to like you know the incentive to want to train more and actually get you know actually get to the top and whatnot. Nowadays, it's like people become your friend, but then behind closed doors, they they talk about you, which is kind of like weird to me. If that's the case, you might as well just be like, you know, man up and just, you know, just tell them what you feel in front of them instead of just waiting behind clothes or being like an internet thug or something. You know? Yeah, I mean, I know Cruz used to be extremely legit. I remember there's still something up on YouTube from back in the day. It's got to be, I think it was 2006. It was something mm -hmm. that took place in the West Coast. It, it must have been in California. And it was an East Coast versus West Coast crew battle. Mm-hmm. And I know you remember that because I know I remember watching it, and that was yeah, of course. that was some crazy stuff to watch. The hype, oh my god, the hype was incredible. Like mm -hmm. everybody was taking that really seriously, and I think it might have been one of the first times East Coast met up with West Coast, so you know everyone was really itching to find out who was better. Yeah. And you know each each side had their top players, but so how was that, how was that experience? Can you recall back to that? that oh yes, that Just one crew battle. That. I knew how I started. It was funny because, mind you, also, not 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 like downplaying any t current tournaments or anything like that. Just so no one be like, "Oh, West is fucking mess." No, back in the days when they held tournaments, it, it, it just had that feeling. So, like FC, in my opinion, was like one of the best, if not the best. Um, I think melee tournaments like out there because, and now it had it just had all of the elements of a tournament and the feel and the hype. Of tournaments because it started raw robin you know it started the the whole like series of raw robins to the bracket you even had dodgeball in that tournament like you was able to play dodgeball on the side for fun that was another thing if, after like after this um conversation i have to link you guys to the um, whole dodgeball tournament they had i found this youtube video of me and a whole bunch of other people playing dodgeball but not only that they had the actual crew battles because you know what happens when they do crew battles nowadays they do crew battles, and the next thing you know, nothing happens. Like, the, the crew battle doesn't even happen. Like, there's not too much hype built around crew battles. But well, back in the days, it was real good with crew battles. But, yeah, going back to me doing crew battles, um, I was um, I was sleeping pretty much at the time, and they woke me up to do crew battles. And I was like, Dad, I didn't even take a shower yet. And, like, I have to go in the shower because the thing is, the FC, is everything is all in one. You're in this big gym, but up on the top, there's, like, um, rooms, conference rooms everyone can sleep at. So they provided housing and um tournament space and all that stuff so you could play smash 24 hours so wow. um yeah it was, it was pretty efficient that's like one of the most efficient tournaments i've been to because a lot of times like oh the video's about to close at 12 a.m get your last games guys you know how it goes so yeah, <laughs> yeah this 24 hour smash so azen as azen always does he plays 24 hours till his eyes bleed <laughs> 
So yeah, um, they told me, you know, I had to get up and play a match. And I was like, damn, I'm tired. So I don't know if you noticed, but when you see the crew battle, you'll see me like wrapped up in covers because I'm just woke. They just woke me up and I'm cold as crap. And I'm like pretty much in my pajamas in a white beater. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, who, I, who I have to fight? They put me up first. for this box. I like smack him up. And the next thing you know, I fight Hugs. And then I just start talking mad smack to him. Was that then, the, uh, that was the Samus did, all right? Yeah, yeah. And then it was oh, funny. I was, just, I was calling out all his moves and everything, beating him up. And the next, you know, when I kill him, I start giving everyone a pound. I didn't even care if I got hit. I, I gave everyone a pound and everything. Everyone started getting hyped. Because I took off like six or seven stocks off the east, off the, off the west coast. And I was like tired and everything. So I took a stock off them. And then right after that, he, he kind of punched me. And I just looked at him like I just struggled. Like, I don't care. I took off six big stock from you guys <laughs> when I was just not even like ready and then right after that I just went and took a shower and then by the time I came back we almost like finished the crew battle because East Coast at the time was like real strong if they aren't strong now the strongest East Coast usually always the strongest when it comes to um to um smash yeah I just remember man it's such a memorable thing to watch if you guys haven't watched it yet um you should go look it up on YouTube what was it what was it called it was the FC FC, uh... Crew Battle? It was, it was like, yeah, yeah if you FC look up, it was like... It up, you'll find it, you'll find it. It might be like FC6 or something like that. It was East East Coast versus West Coast, and it's yeah. a crew battle, and it's it's really long. Like, the whole thing is on YouTube. Yeah, um, they, actually, they actually put work into that, man. Because the person who did it, big ups to, uh... Shout out to, uh, Bach. He's, like, a real good... He's, like, the... Uh, I call him, like, the godfather of, uh... Of, of um, editing videos and such but when it comes to Smash. Cause he was le- real legit. Before all of these YouTube heads like put all this stuff on, on Smash, he was the guy who really, he pretty much paved the way when it came to like editing the Smash videos. He started it all. He, cause the thing is, he wasn't the best at Smash, but he, you know, he, he pretty much devoted his time to go to events and actually record montages and stuff like that for people in events. So I, I miss that guy to tell you the truth. That's really legit because nowadays, there, there was at one point, there was the tourney fixes, which I know JG, he might be getting back into those, but that was pretty much about the most devoted that anyone got into, you know, interviewing people in the community and doing montages and stuff like that. So, something like that, I think I think we're really missing that from the community right now, because it, it brings a lot of hype back to, you know, to the tournaments, and it gets other regions excited to travel, which... I know that we have some of the top players traveling around, but, and also, you know, economic situations nowadays and everything, but, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that from the interviews and stuff that I've seen in the past, it's, it's something we could use nowadays. Um, I know there was something on MTV. It was like a reality show, and I remember seeing you on it, and I remember seeing you in, like, in a training session in New York City, because, uh, I think it was, was it, D.A. Dave? Oh, it was, it was, um, it was Killer O.R. Killer he, O.R., okay. Yeah, he was featured on, was. um, yeah. You know, <laughs> Killer O.R., the former D.A. member, he was featured on, um, it was called MTV's, um, I think it's True Life of a Gamer, I believe. And, uh, you know, they did, uh, they did three segments of the show. One with, with him, one with, um, a girl who does first-person shooters. She was, she does, um, counter, she had a, she had a Counter-Strike team. I think there was um always oh, this other guy who did Halo. I forgot his name. I think it's um T squared or something. Him, I believe. Mm. And you know the second one was Killer All. It pretty much just showed how it was his life as a gamer and such. And it just showed how he went through MLG. And it also showed you know cameos from Deadly Alliance members like myself. That's what that's where you got the um the pretty much little footage of people having a smash fest out of my house and things of that nature. So yeah, it was pretty good. I think the coolest thing about that is that, like, MTV picked up on it. And MTV was, like, really big back in the day. Like, it was something that actually had, like, like quality programming. I'm not going to say, you know, compared to nowadays, I don't even I don't even touch that. But it might have been, like, right around the start of, like, you know, reality TVs and just interviewing gamers and following them around, you know, at the MLG events. It was really, really awesome to see because... I don't know, I just kind of wish that something like that happened for... Maybe people don't take Brawl seriously. It definitely, you know, it was an MLG event, but it just it seems so much more legitimate than 
than nowadays where I feel like people just kind of took it for granted. Like, not too many people even knew that Smash was back in MLG. But when Melee hit MLG, like, that was serious business. And just following around the life of, like, a professional gamer, just, like, going back and watching that, it's, it's really inspiring to see, so... That was something else I wanted to talk about. That was cool. All right, is there anything else you want to discuss, Wes? Anything else you, you wanted to, to add? Any topics you want to bring up, maybe? Pretty much, I just want to know, um, I just want to talk about, uh, I guess, the whole Brawl scene, uh, my intake on that. I just want to know, like, the Brawl community is like, how can I say one minute you see like tons of people just excited to play the game then all of a sudden when tournaments happen you see like two people or three people or like it's, it's the community is like kind of fickle nowadays uh, and I just like it just seems to me people just care more about, about winning than actually trying to get good at the game like if they lose and you know they don't make any money or anything like that they don't, it doesn't give them like any type of urge to like train again or get better they just want to quit and and that's it like like I said back in the day people used to lose it didn't matter to them they still they still try their best to get better and usually they just have like tremendous you know tremendous results like look at PC Chris for instance like he was like he lost so many like matches he came third place like there's so many videos if you, if you look at it before he joined the LA Lions, I used to always beat him, like, all the time. And then right after that, like, I say two years later, this guy became, like, one of the best for a whole two years. Like, literally, he'll go tournaments for, like, two years straight, and he wouldn't lose to anyone. Ask Music King, he knows. <laughs> he had a Music King shaking in his boots for, like, two years straight, like, because he couldn't beat him. <laughs> so, that's the only thing I miss, and I, I, and I see that that's the biggest problem with the Smash community as a whole, like, people just, people just aren't, like, enthusiastic to play the game or train anymore or just do anything to get them better. Like, people just look for the easy way out or they just want to win and that's it. Like, if they lose, forget about it. They blame the <laughs> game or something like that. I mean, the game is, obviously, we all know, Brawl isn't the best game and it's not the game that we dreamed of, but if we're going to take it competitive and you waste time on it and such, then you might as well make the best of it. And I think one of the reasons especially that might have been the cause of some of those issues with the community like dying down in the in the in the willingness to want to train and get better like there are people like that but um when brawl was initially released the fact that it had an online system you know we were all really hyped about that but i'm kind of skeptical because the type the type of game that smash is it's not really one that can be played online in my opinion like wi-fi it served its purpose and it still serves its purpose nowadays to you know it teaches you the basics how to read people and stuff like that but there's only you know it takes a certain type of person to take that really really competitively wi-fi and i think it's part of also the reason that we've been split kind of into this sort of this online community and a you know in person community like o offline tournaments i feel like we could we'd have more of a we kind of have like a divided scene right now we kind of always have there are the, just those players that i guess you could say without wi-fi they wouldn't have played as much but I don't know. I, I think just the, the, the fact that Wi-Fi exists kind of inherently keeps us divided because there are people that will just say, but I can just play online. Like, why do I have to go to a tournament? And they'll just, they'll never get to experience what it is. Like, I know, Dakota, when you came to Polybrawl, you can't say that that wasn't, like, an amazing experience. Like, that's completely different from Wi-Fi. And people just got to, you know, you got to head out to stuff. Yeah. Trying to... I mean, when I went, when I got there, I mean, it's more so the people, though. Uh, you know, the competition's competition, but I met some really cool people, and I had an amazing time because the people, you know, had an amazing time too. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I haven't been around, I haven't been around enough to see it dying, or see it, you know, get like less awesome or something. Because I mean, this is the first time I've really been playing it competitively. I played other games competitively. I didn't go to tournaments much. Um, you know, I I mean. 
overall, yeah, I you know when I join a scene like this, I do see people who don't want to advance or like, eh, you know, it's brawl. Why should I, you know, get better, or whatever? But I, I mean, when I went to play brawl, I got slapped, slapped hard. <laughs> you know, I got I got dicked, and by people that I <laughs> think that I could eventually beat, I really did, and I made one dollar, and um. But the, but I wanted like all right I went home and I started to you know learn things I've been playing and trying to practice so next time I go to a tournament like that I could try and do better it wasn't you know I don't feel like it's in the money for me I think a lot of people put too much money too much on the tournaments which I never thought was you know the best way to go about it in in terms of competitive video games maybe for like com- other competitive things but not for video games I think you know the competition and the enjoyment and the entertainment and the fun is what it's about so maybe it's because of the money then in my opinion. <clears throat> I think that, I mean, if you look look now compared to back in the day when, well, I'm saying back in the day, but when Brawl first came out, not really back in the day, just a couple of years ago, compared the tournaments then compared to now, the scene is like, it's got to be like the, a third of the size. Like, if you, if you look at Poly Brawl, say that was a, you know, a big New York regional, there were 74 entrants, and like... If you go to late 2008, I know there was a playing trade I missed that I always hear about that was, like, two over 200 entrants. Like, that's ridiculous. I'm pretty sure... Were you there, Wes? Were you there for that? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I was there for that. Like, it, was like, it was, like, close to 200. Like, one or something. It was, it was crazy, yeah. The whole place was packed. Like, people had to sit on the floor. That's like, not crazy just, hype. Yeah, some people couldn't even... Uh, uh, <laughs> Like, some people was just falling asleep while they was playing. That's how long the tournament was, like, last year. I mean, and that, I think that's that was still back in the time where, you know, all the the melee vet, vets, they all played Brawl in the beginning. Like, most of them played it. They mm-hmm. all at least tried it. And it, I think at some point, maybe early 2009, that's when, you know, a lot of the melee players started to drop off. And that, that also... It's unfortunate, but... You know, a lot of them either preferred melee or they just they didn't like brawl. So, thing is too, it has to do. We have to. Uh, it's also the people, like you said. I mean, the scene is good, but the people are cool. You know, a good portion of people are cool. But if we still had the uh, the vets from melee, melee play brawl, I think that helped the community out a bit more because you need kind of a, a little bit more uh, of different, I guess personalities and communities to keep it growing you need your you, you need your emos you need your emos in the community <laughs> you need your little bit of emos you need um your cocky guys who talk crap like me you need your, uh you need your middle your people like uh d1 that's you know that's pretty much neutral with everyone and then you just need your people that just straight up go to tournaments and be people behind and don't say stuff like as like well so <laughs> you need, you need yeah, all I usually your, keep to myself. Yeah, so you need your mixture. To me, it seems like Brawl is a little bit more of like either a little bit of uh, mainly like I say, I say 40% emo and then like 30, 40% well and then the rest is just scattered. You barely get any cocky guys like to make, to smack people up to make them, oh, I gotta get this guy. Like, and stuff like that. That's part of the reason, that's one of the reasons why. I'm I'm coming back in the scene because like real hard because I just want to smack these kids up a little bit and just make them <laughs> make them want to take me out because I, I they should honestly to all be frank I shouldn't even be be being anyone in this game because I number one I be, I don't play the game as much as I used to in melee and um yeah these kids have a lot of time to play this game and I'm sure they play what is a bunch of Wi-Fi warriors that play all the time and whatnot so. Because for me, I just get I just get a lot of a lot of beating these people <laughs> and talking crap. Because at the end of the day, if I lose, I won't I'm not gonna be crying or go to um go to training mode for like 24 hours straight to try to like practice against the character that beat me. So <laughs> that's pretty much my whole and that's all that's my whole thing on just coming back to the scene, just to probably try to help and build some type of incentive in the people that actually come out and play again. All right, everybody, that brings us to the end of Directional Influence, episode 12. Uh, I want to first, 
you know, give a huge thanks to VVV for hosting us for 12 episodes so far. Because if we didn't have a host, then we wouldn't be able to release the show. So, that's sort of obvious. Um, I also want to give a huge thanks to everyone in the community for following us and, you know, being huge supporters. We've got a lot of popularity because we're awesome. And we know we're awesome, but we're, we thank you guys for, you know, helping us out and giving support and whatever. I want to thank Will for being on time. I want to scold, wag my finger to Matt for not being here. Why? I don't know. I want to thank Wes for showing up, for giving us an amazing interview. And we're really glad to have him and with all his insight and the stuff he does. And hit his charity stuff up because he has some really, really awesome things for some people in need. And, he, you know, he's a great person overall. For all you guys uh, to keep updates on SOS Gamers, just visit our website at SOSGamers.org. All right, cool. I want to let you all know that you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, VVV Gaming, all is brawl, Smashboards. You'll be able to find exactly how to do that on our, you know, post where we post this episode that you're listening to right now. So you can do all that to make sure you have the most up-to-date news on Directional Influence, how to listen to the show, when to listen to the show, and what you should be doing to give us feedback, comments, critiques, etc. With that said, we are out on uh, episode 12. Episode 13 will be coming next week, but for right now, we are signing out. Thanks for listening. We'll see everybody, well, uh, we'll see everybody later. Thanks for listening.